Keep on the sunny side, always on the sunny side. Keep on the sunny side of life. It will help us every day. It will brighten all the way. If you keep on the sunny side of life. Hi, this is Joe Martin. It's good to be back and get to talk to him. Sorry I've missed out on seeing you for a little bit, or at least you seeing me for a little bit. I've been on a break, did some traveling, did a lot of firewood and canning and other things that needed to be done. My garage got cleaned out. So, I, you know, you can see the, the sun's a little bit different angle. The seasons are changing. Um... I was thinking about this this old uh, this old four string banjo. Playing it kind of in the new season. To everything turn turn turn. There is a season, turn, 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 and a time for every purpose under heaven. To everything, turn, 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 there is a season, turn, 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 and a time for every purpose under heaven. It's so true out of Ecclesiastes chapter 3. I remember talking about this passage when we were in the beginning parts of, of the COVID difficulty. You know, and I, I want to talk to you about seasons since we're in that point. Ecclesiastes 3 1 says there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. There is a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them time to embrace and a time to refrain, a time to search and a time to give up and a time to, uh, or a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away and a time to tear, to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. You know, seasons just mean change. They're the reality that we live with, that no matter where you live, there's those shifts in the seasons and the currents in life and in creation. You know, seasons can stretch us. They can push us a little bit. The seasons passing, sometimes when I see these beautiful days, you know, it's so perfect and clear and everything's coming to fruition. It can bring a little bit of sadness. I remember a poem from a long time ago by Robert Frost. It goes like this. It says, nature's, nature's first green is gold, her hardest hue to hold. Her early leaves a flower, but only so an hour. Then leaf subsides to leaf, so Eden sank to grief. So dawn goes down today, Nothing gold can stay. You know, that idea that nothing golden lasts, the beauty, those things, there's going to be change. There's going to be a shift. Sometimes you want to just stop, don't you? You just want to freeze frame where you are because it's so great. But life isn't, life doesn't work like that. Life has to be lived, not frozen. 
You know, even the most beautiful seasons will pass and change. You know, you you may be in a, a you know, we are in a new season in the creation and the world and the calendar. It's so beautiful out here in the cabin, in the woods. You may be in a season in your life. Maybe it's a beautiful season or it's a dark season. It may be a season of great transition or turmoil or change or pain or grief or loss in your life. It might be a season of great disappointment. I've had my share of that, of um, feeling real, um, yeah, just, just struggles. So it could be a season in your life or it could be a season in your family. Maybe you're, you've got young kids or maybe you've got, um, maybe you've got, uh, maybe your kids are grown and they've moved out or maybe you've got teenagers <laughs> or maybe you're at a season where your family has shifted and people have moved into different places or maybe you've moved away and it could be. Maybe in your relationship, in your marriage, it's a different season. You're trying to learn what it's like at this point and as you've changed. Your relationships can have seasons. Friendships have seasons. Sometimes they, uh, you know, the, you know, the old saying, make new friends and keep the old summer silver and the other's gold. It's true. And there are different seasons in church. Um, you know, I've been here for 42 years. There's been deep roots and establishments in this community and deep love for you and and we felt great love. And but churches go through seasons. Challenging times bring challenging seasons, you know. And sometimes we can be frightened or sad. But the, whether you're frightened or whether you're sad or whether you're faithful and excited, um, change is going to happen. It's going to come. There's going to come a change. And for me, as we head into this new season, there's always fear. You can always be fearful, but there's also an excitement for the new season. You know, one of the things that's happened was for those of you, especially those of you that are that watch this that are in Toledo and have been here for a long time. And, and those of you that haven't, if you remember this, if you're going to do this, when you stay rooted in place for a long time, the rhythm and changes of that place work into your life too. Those rhythms and changes of seasons bring comfort to you. They can bring rest like, oh, I don't have to do that now. There's a new thing to do. They can even bring thrill. Wow, what about that? What about when the snow comes? <laughs> or the frost is on the pumpkin or when the, the, new, the new garden season happens. There's a thrill for the next thing. You know, nothing grows without change. The prerequisite to growth is change. And so you may be in a new season for you. This, as I said, it might be something new, it's something uncertain for you. And I'm going to tell you as a church, we're in a very new season. You know, the global church, as well as Toledo First Baptist Church, has been through some tough seasons with the pandemic and with uh, COVID and a lot of other things that have gone on. You know, uh, the churches in our area have been through tough things, and we have too. And you stuck it out, though you were faithful and kind and and patient. And it was not easy, and we didn't all do it perfectly, and I wouldn't say that for a second. But that hard season we've come through has brought some new growth. It's brought, I'm excited, new season. You know, we're doing some new things in discipleship. We're working on, you know, God led us after seeing this and seeing how it affected you and affected us and the loss and the grief and the, and the, the way we handled things and each other. Well, we um, could see that we had a deep, deep gap in how people were, uh, people and families were really helped to be emotionally healthy and strong. So this season we went through, we're... And we decided that we have to make a central focus in our life to include emotional health and relational health in our discipleship. We, we've made some efforts at it, but obviously this season that we went through taught us that they weren't strong. So after the devastation of COVID, COVID 
and all that it brought, no matter where you stood on that or how you felt about it, we can't eliminate how it impacted us. We saw that and we realized we have to help people get emotionally and relationally healthy and strong. You know, we started this new um, discipleship emphasis this last week and it's, I'm so excited. I've never been more thrilled about anything in all the 40 some years I've been here. Our first session was extraordinary. It was that first session to equip TFBC to be an emotionally healthy um, place, emotionally and relationally healthy community of Christians. It's going to take a while. It's going to probably take years and years. But it wasn't just the no amazing number of people that were open to this and showed up. It was the extraordinary spirit of sharing and learning and, and kindness toward each other that I was just shocked by. It's an exciting new season. There's also a new season of in-person gathering. And that starts, actually, if you're watching this on Wednesday, it'll start tonight at 6.30. And it's for all ages. Now, we haven't got the meal component yet. We're still going to wait till that comes back together. But this is the first Wednesday of in-person gathering for a family night time since night since 2020. <laughs> I did almost said 19. But the middle... I think of February 2020. Wow. So now if you're interested, I'm doing a group on Wednesday night. There's ladies groups, there's other groups. So I will begin to phase out these cabin talks. That are this, like this one I'm doing right now, these midweek talks, because I'm going to be doing these in-person talks. Now, I'm not, I'm, I know some of you live a long ways away, and I'm unsure how many, I, I'm not even sure how many actually watch this or exactly who watches it. But it, I don't want you to be just left. So uh, I want to thank you for watching these and participating in these, but I, or sharing them if you have. And But I also want you to let you know that I really, if you can, I really want to see you in an in-person gathering that's going to be starting tonight and go on. And it's going to be like starting out just questions and answers, how people know. There's going to be all different types of people there. And if that is not possible for you to be there, I, I want you to let me know if these cabin talks are really important to you and they'll really be help you because I'm going to be sensitive to your need. And if I need to do them, I will. So, but I just want you to know, I'm not going to assume anything. I want you to know, I want you and we want you as we work to do this. And we're not there yet to be a emotionally and spiritually and relationally healthy place so that you can grow up in him and everything. This discipleship we're doing is really different, but it's so rooted. And as I've read through it and gone through it, and we've gone through it in scripture, as you really give it a good look and not just, uh, not just, you know, um, have a closed mind, you'll see what God can do. You know, I, I'm also reminded what Ecclesi Ecclesiastes chapter 311 says after that whole talk about seasons, it says he's made everything beautiful in his time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men and gives us that hunger. Yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. Oh, God is, we need to, we're cultivating wonder. That's what we need to be doing. And I will find it just amazing. I'll be, I'll be filled with wonder toward God as I see you. Maybe this coming Sunday as we talk about, um, Luke chapter 10, but also to, tonight, maybe you'll be there if you can come. And maybe if you couldn't get this, couldn't get there this week, you'll get there next week and bring your kids and friends and God bless you. And you remember, I'm praying for you and let me know if there's something we need. Thank you for your giving. You've been given online. Thank you for your comments and responses. And, uh, I'll, I'll uh, let you know. I am going to try and play my banjo next week. <laughs> Somebody told me that on Sunday. God bless you. Thanks for watching this.